going forward. The next thing I want to talk about is, you know, one of my favorite segments on the show, God's Mistakes. So take a look at this nun who is the, this, I fucked it up. Take a look at this child murderer dressed as a nun. What are God's mistakes? He doesn't know. All he knows is how to get children in his car to murder them. So we've got a report from the Independent. They found three new species of snailfish in the pitch black waters of the Atacama Trench, that's off the coast of Chile, one of the deepest parts of the ocean. It's called the Hadal Zone, H-A-D-A-L. This is a, it's, it's really, so for a long time, let me break down deep sea stuff. The term God's mistakes came from my friend where she was like, you know, when God invented all these animals, the ones that are really fucked up, he threw them at the bottom of the ocean. She's like, yeah, no one's ever gonna see this shit. So there was this understanding that you have the surface and then you have some certain zones as there's less and less light and life changes because of the top of coral. Coral has um, algae in its cells that use sunlight, and they all kind of have the symbiotic relationship. Once there's less sp sunlight, you're going to have more sponges, which filter the water, or you're going to have corals that don't have algae in their cells and just eat plankton directly. Then you get further, and things change. But after a certain drop-off, the idea was that it's all the same because there's no sunlight, uh, there's no anything. It's just water, uh, enormous water pressure. But they learned that there are certain zones further and further you go. And what they call the Hadal, there's like the abyssal zone, what they call the Hadal zone, they thought, well, there's no possibility for life there. Even if there is life, it's going to be little kind of insects or viruses. No, 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 no. They found that they are fish uh, at the very bottom of the sea. Uh, international research team used baited camera traps to reveal the mysteries of this largely unexplored region. Uh, it's 24,000 feet 24,000, but it's teeming with life. Among the creatures they observed um, were snailfish. Uh, Dr. Thomas Lindley, one of the team members, uh, said the, the benefit of living there is that the snailfish are alpha predators, so they don't have to have competitors or anything to prey on them. And as the footage I'm about to show, uh, uh, put up clearly shows, there's lots of invertebrates down there, so they're quite well fed, which is different Think about it. if you're the only predator and you're eating these crustaceans, it's going to be pretty easy for you as opposed to the fish that are maybe a thousand feet above you where there's no surface, where there's no floor, uh, uh, sea floor for the bugs to crawl on. So you're just kind of floating in basically space, hoping once a year to get a fish's prey. So it's a very different ecosystem. Uh, how snailfish manage to live down there, they have a gelatinous structure, which means they're perfectly adapted to living at extreme pressure. And the hardest parts of their body is their teeth. The bones in their inner ears are what give them balance, and without the extreme pressure and cold to support their bodies, they're very fragile. And when you bring them up to the surface, 24,000 feet, they just melt. Um, he had previously, this, the same Dr. Lindley described the deepest fish ever found, 26,900 feet at the bottom of the Mariana uh, Trench, uh, the Mariana snailfish. The fact, here's what's fascinating. There were three of them. So you think, okay, there's one ecosystem, one snailfish, evolution's gonna evolve one thing. There's a pink one, a blue one, and a purple one. So the fact that you have this differentiation, I don't understand how evolutionarily that would happen because all the fish are snailfish. They're all living in the same place. They're all eating the same food. Well, I guess now you're gonna have ones that specialize in different kinds of prey items. So I just answered my own question and that'll evolve into three different species. Um, they analyzed 100 hours of video footage and 11,000 photographs. And one of their traps actually managed to catch a snailfish, bring it to the surface, and the remains are being preserved and analyzed. So this is a, only in the last five years have they managed to work out these lander trap systems. And their latest expedition saw them uh, target this Atacama Trench, which, is, which runs along the uh, South America for 3,700 miles. So there's a lot. I mean, that's the thing. Again, I've said this before. This is why I hate Star Trek. Because if you look at Star Trek, it's a guy with blue skin, whereas there's 3,000 miles of the Hadal Zone off the coast of South America, where there's sorts of things that live that look like nothing else even on Earth. So how it works is they drop it overboard. It takes, this is how deep it is. It takes four hours to hit the bottom. Four hours. And it's got HD cameras, it's got bait, it's got traps, and, they bring, and then they bring it back to life. Uh, they also found something called munopsids, which are long-legged crustaceans the size of your hand. So, you know, there's, little pill, the, there's something called those pill bugs or roly-polies. Some people might know they're crustaceans that live on land. These, imagine roly-polies with really long, thin legs, like on stilts. They're horrific looking. So let's play this footage. It's just absolutely fascinating to watch. 
That's how dark it is at the bottom of the sea. Sunlight can't permeate, so everything you see is jet black. It's just amazing. Okay, so this is the trap. Let's turn off the music. This is the trap. They drop it to the bottom, obviously. Four hours later, four hours. Just uh, I, This is one of my bucket list things, to go to the bottom of the ocean. They have these little manned things. Uh, uh, what's his name? James Cameron did it to the... Okay, so look at that. So they move very, very slowly. But you could see how, how their bodies are so gelatinous it's like, like, and, and like gelatin-like, to be redundant. But See, the trap attracts those amphipods, and the, the stalefish just go and eat the amphipods. And do, look at those, side, those pectoral fins, they're very big. And there's... The, no, that's not something else. So yeah, you could see all three species right there in that shot. And those are the monopsids I talked about earlier with the long, long, disgusting, horrific legs. Oh my God. And look how fat they are. So those things are having a good time uh, uh, keeping themselves fed at the bottom of the Hadal zone.